So related to the three cell model, then three cells in each hemisphere, right? We should kind of have these um, kind of pressure, these surface pressure belts. And we do kind of see them in a sense. Um, this is to say, for instance, where the two Hadley cells meet, we said that that is um, about at the equator. And you've been seeing, I've been kind of introducing you to this intertropical convergence zone. The word convergence actually is talking about the trade winds converging there. Our northeasterly trades in the northern hemisphere and our southeasterly trades in the southern hemisphere. So I'll put H for Hadley cells here. H for Hadley cells. So we generally have um, what we call an equatorial low, a band of low pressure at the Earth's surface in that region where the Hadley cells meet. Then where the Hadley cells descend and the feral cells pick up, okay, where that air is descending, we tend to have kind of a belt of high pressure subtropical high pressures. And we'll see that actually we tend to have an ongoing high where the Hadley cell, um, the part of the Hadley cell descends there. Then kind of looking, uh, be, let's just go ahead and look to the feral cell, put an F for feral, F for feral, and then P for polar. There's our three cells in each hemisphere. We tend to have something then um, associated with the feral cell or between the feral cell and the polar cell, a subpolar low where that's the ascending air again of the polar cell ascending and the, um, the feral cell ascending. And then we have a relatively high pressure up here at, the, at 90 degrees latitude and that's called the polar high. So we do kind of see those pressure belts. So just to kind of show you, so this is ideally what those pressure belts would look like. Now I'm going to show you, and basically the influence of land here, where remember that land is going to heat um, and cool differently than large bodies of water. So there's South America, there's North America. So just for this sort of um, shot being shown here, can you see where there is just a little bit of a scramble between the idealized um, surface pressure zones and what it actually is. And notice that as they've been drawn over here to your left, um, that's just a, just kind of a typical situation. It, in fact, it kind of uh, uh, will vary from day to day. But you do see these uh, very uh, important subtropical highs in either hemisphere. They don't they don't go across the land necessarily, but you also see the intertropical convergence zone where the trade winds converge, and you see a high pressure up here at the poles, so the polar high. Now you do kind of see it a little bit. The other thing, other than land, that actually influences these, kind, these, these cells is um, seasonal influence. And we talked about, um, clear back in Unit 1, about as the Earth um, orbits the sun throughout the course of a year, because of its tilt, um, the angle of the sun is different for different latitudes. And so specifically, um, in June, we get, in the northern hemisphere, gets the most solar, ra solar radiation, the, and in December, the southern hemisphere gets the most solar radiation. So we're going to see, I like this, we're going to see a, a wandering, in fact, I think that's the name of the slide coming up, a wandering, wandering intertropical convergent zone. And it wanders according to where is the most intense um, uh, energy uh, from the sun. So as the intertropical convergent zone wanders, remember that's the thing between the two Hadley cells, then the other, then everything else wanders too. Okay, so... Um, before we talk about kind of um, before we talk about the wandering intertropical convergence zone, I want to talk about these general regions, ongoing regions of high pressure, and they are seasonal too. I'll show you here in a minute. But a few slides ago, when on the left we talk about talked about the non-idealized, semi-permanent uh, pressures at the Earth's surface, that's what I'm talking about here in a minute. Um, 
So remember that these high pressures, these semi-permanent high pressures, are actually where the Hadley cell meets the Ferrell cell in both hemispheres. Um, now, remember that if we look at a high, what we would expect in the northern hemisphere is for air to be going clockwise. Um, we call that anticyclonic in the northern hemisphere. In the southern hemisphere, if we're looking for movement because of the Coriolis force or deflection because of the Coriolis force, around a high in the southern hemisphere, we're going to be looking for it to also go anticyclonic, but it will be counterclockwise. So keep that in mind. All right, here we go. Here are our semi-permanent highs and lows in the month of January. Now remember, I'm going to compare here in a minute January to uh, July. But in January, you would expect, and by the way, this line right here that we see, this is the intertropical convergence zone. In January, you would expect the southern hemisphere to be getting the lion's share or to kind of take possession of the intertropical convergence zone. And in fact, when we compare this to July, the intertropical convergence zone is kind of moved southerly. So let's look at those semi-permanent highs that are associated with the, um, the descending part of the Hadley cell. So I have three drawn here. We have the semi-permanent Pacific high, the Azores high, and the Siberian high. And superimposed on this then would be this is where the Hadley cell is descending. Well, in the southern hemisphere, oops, well, before I get there, um, the lows then would be where, um, here's a Lucian low, see there's another one, yep, the Iceland low, maybe that's it, okay. So these lows up here then are where the, um, there it goes up here, see how it kind of wanders, it's not straight across by, by latitude. That would be where the feral and the polar cell meet, and that would be because of the ascending air there at the polar front, we're going to call it the polar front here in a minute. So let's look at the southern hemisphere. Again, we have these semi-permanent highs. I don't have fancy names for them, but these are some semi-permanent highs in the southern hemisphere. Okay, switching months. That was January. This is July. I'm going to show you in here, here in a minute to prove to you that the intertropical convergence zone kind of has wandered north. So there's the intertropical convergence zone. And let's look again at our semi-permanent highs. We have the Pacific high there. I love this one. Have you ever heard of the Bermuda Triangle? Actually, it is in this vicinity over here in the Atlantic Ocean. And this one right here, the semi-permanent high, is what we call the Bermuda high. Again, it would be where the um, where the the feral, the Hadley and the Feral cell, Hadley H for Hadley and F for Feral, Hadley and the Feral cells meet. Um, let's see, we have a low pressure up here. That would be where the feral and the polar cells meet. Then looking at our semi-permanent highs in the southern hemisphere. I don't have fancy names for them. I bet they do have fancy names, though. Okay, this would be in the month of July. So just to kind of show you the wandering intertropical convergence zone. I don't know why I think that's so cool, but I do. So these are the slides that we looked at, uh, first in January and then in July. And they are the same slides. Again, if you kind of focus on the intertropical convergence zone and see how it wanders. January, it kind of goes south. And in July, it wanders north.